For about five years, we've been following a study from the Texas A&M Health Science Center's School of Rural Public Health. It has to do with the idea that standing while you're working at an office or studying at a school has some big benefits as opposed to sitting like most probably did when they were in school. That study is now finding its way into an international journal of medicine. Part of the work was done with local students, as former News 3 reporter Nicole Morton showed us about two years ago. It's not your typical classroom learning environment. I noticed Ross getting out his star binder. Instead of sitting all day long, at Southwood Valley Elementary, teachers are encouraging students to stand. What I like about, best about the desks is because it makes your spine stronger is because literally you just slam back. The stand-up desks, which sit from two to three feet off the ground for second and third grade classes, allow students to alternate between standing and sitting. There's uh, less distraction. For them. The study began three years ago through a partnership between College Station ISD and the Texas A&M Health Science Center as a part of a new approach to addressing childhood obesity. It is a big change in the way that we think about our workstations. It's a way it difference in the way we think about work. Today, the study is still going strong. The one we're doing right now in College Station with 400 children is the, the largest to uh, be undertaken in that arena. Ashley's following directions. So strong, in fact, the concept has migrated from the classroom into the corporate world. When you stand more often than not, it strengthens all of those muscles so that you do have better posture. Findings are fairly similar. Uh, increase in calorie expenditure, improved alertness, um, positive response from the people using the desks and that they feel more comfortable, more healthy, more productive, and, and ultimately for employers, if they if they feel that way, that's that's a big win. So far, it is a win-win situation, whether you're in wonderful job, boys and girls, or out of the classroom. And you saw Mark Benden in the piece there. He joins us now. You guys have gotten a little bit more publicity with that study that you've done over the past five years, so an international journal that it's now in. Correct. It's been great to see the team science aspect of this, Steve, with combining statisticians and engineers and uh, educational psychologists into a study that looks over a course of time at several different aspects of this. Uh, we came into it in particular for the health aspects, as you know. Yeah, there, it's twofold, though. You guys have discovered uh, health benefits to these young people and especially with childhood obesity being as big a problem as it is right now this could be a big thing but also there's a mental aspect to it as well correct you know when you when you do a study that you're trying to do some sort of intervention for health one of the things you kind of have to be careful of up front is make sure first and foremost that you do no harm and so if you're going to go into a classroom environment and try to improve health you have to make sure that academic outcomes aren't going to be hindered in any way and so that was a, a very positive sign of this most recent study is that we're not affected negatively any of the engagement and in fact for some of the children we're increasing the engagement and allowing them to focus and stay on task. So how does standing or at least uh, the option of standing help improve the education of these children? Sure. We, we believe cognitively that there's a certain uh, uh, happy medium for the for the body. So as we engage the body too little, the mind struggles to focus. Uh, this would be the after lunch, I'm sleepy, I can't stay focused on my work mode. Um, there's another place where too much exercise, you know, you've been on the treadmill for 40 minutes and someone comes in and asks you hard math questions, it's <laughs> difficult to do those. And so we know those extremes. Putting people in an office or in a school in that happy place where there's enough physical stimulation in the body to keep them focusing on task is what we're after. And we believe that being upright and ambulating and moving is, is sort of the answer. So it's not don't sit as much, stand, it's don't sit as much, get up and move move about, move around, move your body. So recess and gym class weren't just for staying physically fit. It Absolutely. might have been a benefit as well. And, and you mentioned uh, before we went on the air, those are kind of sliding off a little bit. It's been a struggle for schools to keep the same amount of physical activity through organized recess and organized PE. You've got after school sports and activities hopefully, but not all kids can participate. So it's a real challenge to keep the same level of physical engagement. And over the last 30 years, we've become more and more and more sedentary, less and less physically active. And of course, you can look at the obesity trends and they, they follow directly. There's a direct correlation with that. What are then the physical benefits that you guys have seen over the course of this study? So what we've been 
been tracking is first calorie expenditure just to see if, you know, does that go up? And we found, yes, calorie expenditure goes up when you're in an environment that's what we call activity permissive. So it allows you to get up and move around or you can sit on your stool and sit still and focus just like you would in a normal seated classroom. Either way, it's up to the child. It's, it's by their choice. Uh, what we find in these environments, though, is that in addition to the calorie expenditure now, we've been tracking the BMIs and we've been watching the kids over a couple of years to see what's going on. And we're also seeing very promising results from that. So that's the other big health outcome. I think there are probably some parents and some teachers even that would be watching this saying, if my kids have the chance to be up and to move around a little bit, chaos is going to break loose mm -hmm. in my classroom. What's the yeah. thought on that? That's a great point. And so we were very concerned about that, of course, with the teachers. And I have to give a shout out to all the College Station teachers who are brave enough to step out and try something new like this. Um, you know, credit to them. But, you know, when you look at what happened with the engagement of the, the classroom, the teachers reported to us that they had better classroom management. So that means they're, they're teaching more and correcting and disciplining and adjusting behaviors less. And so that's a really big finding, I think is that the teachers can do what they're there for, which is to teach. And when they can do that, all of the kids benefit because the kids who weren't misbehaving aren't waiting for the teacher while the teacher's correcting someone else. They're continuously learning. And so that creates a better environment for learning. It's absolutely fascinating stuff. Five years in, I'm sure you're mm -hmm. still going to be following that. We'd love to hear a little bit more in the coming years on it as well. Absolutely. Mark Benden, thank you very much for coming in. We appreciate it.